Hey guys, Doug B here. This week we're going to talk about firmware 17.00 and the changes that were made with it. Now the big news of course is AMP in the room, which are cab IRs that are much longer than your standard 20 milliseconds. Cliff says that these new full res IRs can go up to 1.37 seconds. Now IRs of that length, you know, where the mic is like two to three feet away from the speaker cabinet, they tend to take on a lot more of the speaker's tone and characteristics than the standard 20 milliseconds IRs would. And that can include some room reflection as well. Now this gives a more amp in the room sound, especially for headphones and for um, recording. Although I've been using it just, just here in the studio on my studio monitors too. Anyway, let's look at what's offered in firmware 17.00. Improved pitch detection performance. Now I thought, you know, one way that I know to test this, I was using the virtual capo. So, let's see here. Here's a regular G. Let's go up one. The front panel user interface has been improved to support double tap of certain keys as follows. Double tapping home gets you right into the grid. Well, this is interesting, guys, because I said double tapping home does enter the layout grid. Double tapping edit is supposed to edit the previous block. So like right now I'm on the reverb block. It's supposed to go to the delay block, but what it does is it brings you into the reverb type page. So I think I will mention that online. And then double tapping store prompts you, you know, do you want to do it right now? Do you want to save it right now? It doesn't ask you again, are you sure? It just goes right to overwrite, yes or no. So I'm gonna hit exit. When on the home or layout pages, double tapping the quick entry knobs does the following. A enters the amp menu. Double tapping B brings you into the drive menu. Double tapping C brings you into the cab one menu. Double tapping D brings you into the delay one menu. And double tapping E brings you into the reverb menu. The controls in the effects basic page have been reduced to a single page. For example, the basic page for the T808 OD has been simplified down to drive, tone, and level. The older pick from the manual shows two rows of knobs for a total of nine knobs. Fixed names of Dizzy V42 and Dizzy V43 swapped. I guess before these were reversed. Now they are corrected and everybody's happy. They re-added the FAS buttery, which is based on a Buddha. 
added one s 158 t diode spice model to drive block. This is the Toshiba version of the one s 1588 and it's reportedly the diode used in the best sounding TS 808s. The T808 OD models have been updated to use this diode. Existing presets are unchanged. Also added Maxoff 808 and Valve Screamer VS9. These were modeled from the Tube Screamer VS9 and the Maxon 808. Improved scene switching to prevent signal leaking into bypass blocks. added max loop time parameter to looper. This sets the maximum recording time. This allows a loop to be automatically created once the loop time exceeds this value. Change looper behavior so that if recording and time reaches the maximum recording time, the mode changes to that specified by record second press. And in this case, that would be overdub. Also added support for Axe FX3 Mark II Turbo. This is the just announced latest FX3 to come out. And as always, various fixes and improvements. So now we get to the big news. The full res IRs that will allow FX3 users to get that amp in the room feel in their headphones and recordings. If you have a Mark II, now you can use FR as a choice in user banks three and four. You can store up to 32 full res IRs per bank. Now if you have a Mark 1, you can use Scratchpad as your IR location. You can only use one full res IR per Scratchpad, so you'd put the left IR in Scratchpad 1 and the right IR in Scratchpad 2. They'll remain stored in your Mark 1 unit until you power down and then you'll have to re-add them again once you power it back up if you want to use the full res again. As of this firmware, there is no method for permanently storing full res IRs on a Mark 1 unit, but I do understand that Cliff is working on this. You need to know that adding full res IRs right now takes a pretty hefty CPU hit on your FX3. Cliff is working on tightening the CPU usage, but right now each full res IR takes around 15% of the CPU. Let's build a simple new preset in slot 405 using the updated features found in firmware 17.00. We'll use quick build. And let's see, let's grab an in block. Let's grab an out block. Let's connect them. Okay, now they're connected. Now, let's grab drive, amp, and cab. Turn off quick build. Now in the drive block, let's put the max off 808 in channel A, the T808 OD in channel B, and the valve screamer VS9 in channel C. Now in the amp block in channel A, we have the FAS buttery. Let's see, in channel B, let's put the Dizzy V4 Blue 2. And in channel C, let's put the Dizzy V4 Blue 3. Okay, now in the cab block, going from left to right, I'm in my user bank one, and I'm gonna put this G12M Greenback 212C MD421 Fat CE in cab one. 
And that guy's going to be panned left. All the way. And now in cab two, let's go. Okay, and I'll use a York Audio Marshall 412 M2057-3 in cab two. Pan right. Let's unmute that guy. And let's pan it all the way right. Okay, now we'll unmute these guys. Change that to scratch pad. Change that to scratch pad. And I'm going to add a York Audio 412 Brit Greenback Room left and right full res IRs and scratch pad one and two. You just grab and drop them into the slots. Now York Audio is gracious and donated a collection of free room IRs to try right here. And I'll post the link in the description. So you would just drag them right down here. And again, pan left and pan right. Okay, most guys are saying that they back off the signal to around minus 15 dB for the full res IRs. Some guys are just leaving them at default. I'm using minus 10 dB. Now for some reason it does seem to drop the overall volume a bit, so you can increase your level if necessary. Okay, now let's mute the full res IRs and try with just cab 1 and cab 2. Yep, that's dry. Now, let's mute cab 1 and cab 2 and just have the full res IRs. Yeah, that's kind of like having a short reverb, you know, but a little bit more complex. Now, I could see using them just by themselves in some recording projects. Okay, now let's have all four. <laughs> Pretty cool. And that's really nice for headphones, so they don't sound quite so in your face anymore. And as you can tell, Great for using in recordings, too. Okay, now let's check out the amps and the drives. Let's have that... Let's go back to the amp, and let's just... Okay, now let's check out the amps and the drives. Scene 1 will have the buttery amp just by itself. Let's see, scene two, let's add the Maxon drive. All right, scene three, let's... Yep, let's use the Dizzy V4 Blue 2 all by itself. Let's see. Scene 4. Let's add the TF-808 Overdrive. Okay, scene five, the Dizzy V4 Blue 3. And scene six, let's add the Valve Screamer.
Now, as I mentioned earlier, Cliff is already working on an update to this firmware to uh, tighten up the CPU usage and a few other things. I do believe that will be 17.01, and I, of course, will post a link to it as soon as it comes out. Now, next week, we're gonna look at the various models that Fractal has available right now for its customers, and we'll do some good old-fashioned uh, comparing and contrasting. So you don't wanna miss that, so make sure that you hit that subscribe button and the notifications alarm. All right, guys, see you next week.